Do you use Docker for your local development? If yes, then you should definitely give dev containers a try. I've been using this extension in VS Code and it has really simplified my containerized development environment setup. Now, I understand that starting with new tools can sometimes require a bit of learning, time, and effort. That is why this course in which I'll be walking through the process of setting up local development environment for a web application development. This will be a two-tier stack with an app and a database layer. We'll be running both the application's development environment and the database as Docker containers all within dev container setup in VS Code. Trust me, it's going to be quite interesting. I'm going to start creating a Ruby on Rails application, but remember that these steps apply to any other frameworks. Whether you're into Node.js, Java, or others, the process is very similar. Now, let's start creating our Rails application using dev containers in VS Code. Let's create a project folder, cd into that folder, and then open that in a code editor. Make sure that you have the dev containers extension installed. And of course, you also need the Docker installed. Inside the project folder, all of the dev container configurations will go under the dev container folder. And inside that, we need a dev container JSON file. This is the default file or the path where you mention the dev container configurations for this project. Give this dev container name, let's say dev container for dev or developers. And for this dev container, at the least, we need a Docker image or the dev container image for our project. I'm going to use the dev container image from the Microsoft Artifact Registry. Search for dev container. And here we have many dev container images, which are basically raw images for different programming languages and runtimes. Because I need a Ruby environment, I'm going to use the Ruby image. There are many versions of the Ruby images here. I will pick the version 3.2. And that's the first version of our dev container configuration. All that we have here is a configuration for dev container with Ruby environment. In our local environment or host, which is macOS in my case, the Ruby I have installed is 2.6. And I rarely upgrade the Ruby on Mac as most of my development setup is always containerized. And once we build our dev container environment, the Ruby version in that should be 3.2. So let's build the container. In the command palette, select dev containers, rebuild and reopen in container. This will take a little bit and when it is complete, it will load the VS Code project within the container scope. If you notice, the title indicates that you're inside the container environment. And also, if you open the terminal here in VS Code Editor, the project path or the folder is not the one we created on Mac. So it is the path inside the container for our project. The local folder gets mapped onto the container here, meaning that any changes you make either on your host or Mac or inside the container will be in sync. And the container here has the Ruby version 3.2. So that was easy so far. So now that we have a Ruby environment, let's create a Rails application from inside the container. For that, we need a gem called Rails installed. So let's install that. The command is gem install Rails. And let me just use this particular version of the Rails. Okay, now the Rails gem has been installed. Now let's create our Rails project within this project folder. The command is Rails, new, the current directory, and give it a name blog app and also some options in the command. This is to indicate that I just want the Rails application directory structure and I don't want it to build the app yet. So let's run it and it created an application directory structure which we ran inside the container and you can also see that the directory structure on local on host or the Mac here. Now let's install all the dependencies. Running bundle install installs all the necessary gems and dependencies for the application to run. So that is complete. Let's run the app. The command is Rails S or Rails Server. And in a few seconds, it starts up. Here, VS Code pops this message with the link to open the app in browser. So here is the app that is running inside the dev container we're able to access on the browser. Okay, that was a simple web app that we created with Rails. But in a typical development environment setup, you will have at least one more service or component, such as 
databases, message brokers, or cache, and so on. So in this case, let's add a database layer to this app. We are gonna use MySQL, and I would like to run it as a container alongside our application container. In Rails, by default, it uses SQLite database, which is a file-based database. Once the database is ready, we just need to make a couple of changes in this app. Let's stop the app service and reopen the project outside the container. And that'll stop the container and open the editor in a non-container mode. So now we are outside the container mode. Now to add a new container for the database, we need to change the dev container JSON or the configuration. And that'll require us to create two separate dev container configs, one for the app and the other for the database. And those two container configs will go under two separate folders under the dev container folder. And to link these two containers, we will use Docker Compose and write a Docker Compose YAML. Firstly, let's create a container configuration for the app container under the dev container folder and move the current dev container JSON under that folder. Because we are going to have two container configurations, let's change the name of this container to something like Rails app container. And I'll remove the image from here and configure that in the Docker Compose service definition. So let's create a Docker Compose YAML at the root of this project folder. In that, define a service for the app container. This service will use the same Ruby image. And instead of the service running the app service, let's make it not to do anything but load just the environment. And under the volumes, you will map the current folder or local folder to the workspace directory, which we can set something like slash workspace. So that's pretty much for the Docker Compose YAML for now. And because we are now going to use Docker Compose YAML with dev container setup, we will mention the path or the relative path in here of the Docker Compose YAML that defines this container service and mention the service name defined in the compose that is app also provide a couple of other config options such as shutdown action and workspace folder path that should be good for now before making more changes let's verify that we didn't break anything let's rebuild and reopen in container that takes a few seconds and that comes back up without any error that means refactoring of the container config for docker compose yaml works just fine Remember, we are using just the Ruby image as the container image for the app and we recreated the container again when we rebuilt it and all the installed dependencies will be gone. We'll see how to fix that in a little bit, but for now, let's run the bundle install to install all the dependencies and run the application or the Rails server one more time. Open it in a browser and it all looks good. Now, let's add a database container to our setup. Create a new container config folder. Let's name it DB container. And because we are going to rebuild the container once again, let's just reopen this in local mode. So what we see here is a dev container JSON for the app container. And we need to create a similar one for the DB container. Before that, let's add a new service, DB container service to our Docker Compose YAML. Name the service as DB. It uses a MySQL image from Docker Hub and a couple of other service configurations. And here we provide the password for the MySQL's root user. Now with that, let's define a dev container JSON for the DB container. Name is DB container, provide the Docker Compose YAML path. Service name is DB as mentioned in the Docker Compose YAML and the workspace folder for this container. So with that, let's rebuild and reopen the dev container. Now this time, because we have two containers, it's going to prompt us to choose the dev container JSON or the container to be used. And this is kind of going to be a primary container that the dev container environment will load. And that will be the Rails app container. In a few seconds, we have the dev container ready, which loads the Rails app container environment. Now that we have two containers running as part of this setup, one option to verify the database container is by using the docker desktop. Here is the container group for the ones we created using dev container with the docker compose. There are two containers here, the app and the db. Let's shell into the db container, log into mysql using root user and the password 
is password as we set in Docker Compose. List databases and it shows the default set of databases MySQL comes with. Now let's exit, come back to it in a little bit. Now the DB container for the MySQL is ready, but before we configure the app to use this database instead of the default SQLite, let's make one more change to the app container setup. The app container uses the Ruby image here and it requires us to run things like bundle install to install the dependencies every time we rebuild the container. So instead of that Ruby image, let's create a simple Docker file. Here was a Docker file that was generated when we created the Rails project using Rails new command. I'm going to replace this file with a simpler Docker file to make it easy to follow. So this is the Docker file that uses a base image, Ruby image from Docker Hub, and it configures a workspace folder, installs some build tools, copies the gem file and the log file to the workspace folder in the container, and it runs the bundle install command. That's it. Now, in the Docker Compose YAML for the app service, instead of using the image Ruby, let's use the build spec and provide the current folder as the context, the folder where the Docker file is located. That's it. So let's rebuild the container and test again. Now, when the container loads up, the Rails app container, we have the Rails and dependencies also installed. So we're able to run the app again without needing to bundle install every time we rebuild the container environment. So that is good. Now let's exit out of the container and reopen the project locally one more time. Both the container configuration for the dev container is ready. Now let's update the application's configuration to use MySQL database pointing to the DB container instead of SQLite which is file based. To do that in the app we make a couple of changes. First in the database configuration file. This is the database config file YAML for SQLite by default. I'm going to update this to use MySQL instead and read the database credentials from environment variables. These are the environment variables to set the MySQL username, password, DB host port and the DB name. Now with that, the app service should be supplied with these database configurations as environment variables. So in the Docker Compose YAML for the app service, let's provide some environment variables. MySQL username is root, password is password as configured for the DB container. Host is the service name of the DB container here, DB, default port and the database name. Let's name it a blog app. And some more changes here for linking the DB service and to make it a dependency for the app service. And one more small change or very important change in the gem file is to use MySQL Instead of SQLite, we need the necessary library. In Ruby, we use MySQL 2 gem for MySQL. That's all the changes we needed to make in the app code and the compose file. And now let's rebuild and reopen the container. The dev container is up and we are in the Rails app container here. And we can run any of the Rails commands inside this container shell or terminal like Rails server or any other Rails commands. Now let's try to create a database and see what happens. The way we do that in Rails is by running this command called Rails DB create. What happened here is that Rails app was able to connect to MySQL service running inside the DB container and try to create a database blog app. And that confirms that both containers are running fine and the app was able to connect to the database running inside the DB container. So we can go verify that in the Docker desktop, shell into DB container again, log into MySQL as root show databases and there is blog app database. This database should be empty as we have not created any tables yet. Let's create a table to store some blog post data. In the Rails app container, run a command that create a scaffold for post. This will have two fields, the title and a blog post body, which is going to be a type text and run that and that creates a bunch of code files such as controller, view and so on. And it also creates a Rails migration code to create posts table. Now let's run a command to create the table or in general to execute any pending DB changes. The command is Rails DB migrate. Running this command will make the app to connect to MySQL which is inside the DB container and run create table SQL commands to create the posts table. 
So that is complete. Now in the DB container shell, if we list the tables inside the blog app database, there is the posts table we just created. And this table is empty for now. Let's add a blog post entry to this table. So instead of inserting from the backend, let's do it from the app. The application is all set up and we have some scaffold generated code. And let's run the app, open it in a browser, go to slash posts page. Now this is the route added by the scaffold generator along with a bunch of other code. The UI is pretty basic, no fancy CSS and that's not important. So create a new post with some random input, submit that and the post has been created, which shows up on the listing as well. Let's verify that in the database and there is the new post entry we just created through the app's UI. So that's it. We have the application running as a container and a database also running as container, all within the dev container setup using Docker Compose. So that's pretty much what we had to cover for this short tutorial. Before we conclude, there is one thing I wanted to mention that when we dockerize any apps, you don't just dockerize for local setup, but also to be used through the build pipeline so that you can create a production ready Docker image. Now, when we work in a dev container setup inside VS Code, we want to make sure that you don't create multiple Docker files for different environments. Instead, you can use the same Docker file and make it a multi-stage format so that you not only build a Docker image for local, but also be able to build one for production and test it locally. Once you have a multi-stage format, you can use that for your local development setup and also in the CI CD pipeline. So lastly, you can use Docker just the Docker or Docker with Docker Compose or Docker with Docker Compose within VS Code's dev container extension. My preference is the dev container option. I hope you found this useful and if so, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.